being called for conclusion on part of the witness. Sustain. <laughs> I shall rephrase the question, Your Honor. Simon Peter, did you ever hear Jesus promise that he would be raised from the dead? Yes. And did you believe that promise? Yes. And if then he did not arise from the dead, uh, would he not be a liar? Uh, I guess so. Simon Peter, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? He was the God and is the Son of God. Have you always felt this way? Um, yes. Yeah, Are you sure? Uh, is it not true that on the evening of Good Friday, you denied even that you knew him? And you made this denial not once, but three times. Yes, but, uh, but. I mean, how, how did you feel about these denials? I was sorry for what I've done. So you felt guilty? Yes. You know, Simon Peter, from time to time, all of us say things about someone that we later regret, especially if that person dies. We wish we could take it back, and sometimes we can't. We wish that that person were alive again, so we could apologize and take away the guilt. Your Honor, Your Honor, I object. This line of question is totally irrelevant. Mr. Guys, would you like to explain to the court your intent with such questioning? Uh, no, Your Honor. I, I always draw the question. I'm finished with this witness. Witness is excused. You may call your next witness, Ms. Davis. Thank you. I have one final witness, Your Honor. I call Nathaniel Thomas to the stand. Nathaniel Thomas to the stand, please. <laughs> State your name for the court. Nathaniel Thomas. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You may be seated. Mr. Thomas, would you tell the court what happened to you after the death of Jesus on Good Friday? Well, I was very disappointed after the execution. I had followed Jesus for several years, and I was convinced that I had finally found the Messiah. But after the crucifixion, I began to wonder if the whole thing was just a hoax. I began to seek employment. Would you tell the court what happened to you 10 days later? Before that day, I had heard rumors that Jesus had risen from the dead and appeared to some of the disciples. Two of the disciples found me and told me they had actually seen him. Man, at first, I had my doubts. I just didn't want to get involved. I told them I would have to see the wounds in his hands and feet and place my hands on those wounds before I would believe it. They actually had a tough time convincing me, but they finally persuaded me to go with them to Galilee, where he, they said Jesus would appear before me. And did you go to Galilee? Yes, and I shall never forget it. We were all together in Andrew's house, and suddenly Jesus was there. What happened then? Jesus walked slowly, walked up to me, stretched out his hands, and placed my hands in it. So you actually touched Jesus 10 days after his death? Yes, and saw his nails pierced hands, and I touched him. Did he say anything? Yes. He said, Thomas, because you have seen me and have believed, blessed are those who have never seen me and yet believe. So, is your testimony that you saw Jesus with your eyes 10 days after he died. You heard him with your own ears and you touched him. Is this correct? Yes. I saw him. He spoke to me. I touched him. Your Honor, I have no more questions. Mr. Guys, do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, yes, I do, Your Honor. Mr. Thomas, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Yes, I do. I have no, nothing further, Young. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thomas. You're excused. Ms. Flavius, do you have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. The believers rest. <laughs> the believers. Mr. Guys, are you prepared to call your first witness? 
Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'd like to call Dr. Stephen Lucas. Dr. Stephen Lucas to the stand, please. <laughs> State your name. Dr. Stephen Lucas. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. You may be seated. Mr. Guys, you may examine your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Dr. Stephen Lucas, could you tell us your occupation? I'm a medical doctor with the Roman Army. And how long have you been a medical doctor? About 12 years now. And in your practice of medicine, have you examined dead bodies? Yes, I have. I've had patients who've died. I also pronounce the dead as it's part of our life. So you examine the body before they're buried? Yes, I do. Dr. Guy, did you examine the body of Jesus before, the, after the crucifixion? Yes. Did you walk me through that examination? It was about 6 p.m. I was told the Sabbath of the Jews was close, and it was important for the dead to be buried before sunset. The command was given for the centurion to break the legs of the prisoners. But when the centurion got to Jesus, he was already dead, or at least appeared to be. I told the centurion to pierce his side. He did. Blood and water gushed out. Jesus did not move or cry out. He was taken up the cross. There was no pulse. His body was badly beaten, but none of his bones were broken. For my examination, Jesus was dead. And what happened with the body? I believe it was given to Joseph of Arimathea. The followers of Jesus prepared the body for burial, and Jesus was placed in the tomb. So Dr. Lucas, it is your testimony that Jesus was dead, placed in the tomb, and that he was wrapped in bonded in traditional burial clothes? Yes. Dr. Lucas, is it possible that you were mistaken? No, Jesus was dead. Dr. Lucas, in your 12 years of practice, have you ever had any of your dead patients come back to life? No. I have no more questions. Ms. Flavius, do you have any questions for this witness? I do. Dr. Lucas, you testified that Jesus was dead, correct? Yes. Isn't it true that you were in Bethany when Lazarus was risen from the dead? Objection, Your Honor. What does this have to do with Jesus? Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. My question is to form the foundation that Jesus is able to heal the sick and raise the dead because he is the Messiah. And because he is the Messiah, the God, he himself is risen from the dead. Oh, yes, I was in Bethany when Lazarus was resurrected. Didn't you pronounce Lazarus dead? Yes, I did. Dr. Lucas, where is Lazarus? He he is alive. Jesus rose him from his slumber. I had never seen anything like this. Jesus called him, and he came out of his tomb so wrapped in his grave clothes. But he was dead. Uh, Your Honor, this is ridiculous. You pronounced him dead, and three days later, this Lazarus came forth? Y yes, Your Honor. Is it possible that like Lazarus, Jesus was risen from the dead? But he, but Jesus raised Lazarus. Who raised him? If, if Jesus, if Jesus is risen from the dead, then he is the son of God. Have mercy on, Lord have mercy on us all. The judgment of God is on all of our heads. He's the son of God. We crucify him. Have mercy on us. Objection, you're on objection. That's enough. Mercy, guys. You can't object to your own way. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Flavius, any other questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Guys. I have nothing else to tell for the doctor. Uh, but I would like to call my final witness, Captain Justin Marcus. Dr. Lucas, you may. Captain Justin Marcus. <laughs> 